welcome to Wayne's Cave. Another exciting night in the back garden. The scope's up, set up and uh, it currently tracking again for the second night on M101. Uh, I've just got the refractor out at F7, the Esprit 120 and the, the ZWO mono camera. And we're shooting LRGB, nice sort of long, uh, high dynamic range subs. Third night in four days, uh, and working and <laughs> shooting at night is getting quite tiring. Um, but the plan is to do two nights, uh, uh, two good full nights on, on this target, plenty of integration. But I was thinking when I was setting up, what what what's been a few of them the more simple attributes, or or the simple methods that I felt that I've uh, come across over over the past couple of years of astrophotography that's helped me improve. I was sort of thinking what I could share with you guys. <clears throat> sometimes they seem obvious to some people and not so obvious to others but it got me thinking about asking you guys out there what YouTube videos do you watch? I mean astrophotography YouTube videos just to be clear um, it might seem like a dark question when you're all shouting at me you idiot astrophotography YouTube videos do you Great, carry on watching them all. They're they're all there's a lot out there and they're all great. But I think I could sort of pinpoint a few key areas for me that I think sharing information with you wonderful astro uh, lovers out there um, that that's been of use. And I found that what's been really useful is. A, finding some sources of information that's relative to you and what I mean by that is try and find some other vloggers out there that you can see them working through and um, troubleshooting on the go and, and talking through the troubles they have had and the, the equipment they're using um, and think I sort of tend to think of like the golf swing they say when you're working on your golf swing and you don't need to know anything about golf but if you you can if you want to study someone's golf swing to try and see areas that you can improve on try and find somebody that has a similar um, build to you height to you um, and that more or less it there's a few other things but you see where this is going I found a lot of it, it very useful finding people in the same country then um, you, you can then see the commonly used targets for, for your country that people photograph um, weather patterns will be similar if, if you follow a few people um, you know in the forums or on vlogs and stuff like that you know you've got similar environments that you're you're shooting in that you're 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 doing your astro work in things like and equipment who's got sort of there or thereabouts similar you know is it a refractor they're using is it newtonian you know these things vary so much on how you approach the the methods of, of use out of the different pieces of equipment um so you you kind of and you, you will you will you you will gain so much more use and so much more information that's applicable to you and, and what you're doing for your astrophotography. Uh, I know it certainly helped mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that that was it. I I I you know I'm I'm out again. I'm plodding on. That's the main thing. It's beautiful and clear. There's no moon at the moment. We've had sort of. Saturday and Sunday and half a Monday till some high cloud came in the night before now uh, with zero moon this this is just unheard of I, I can't remember this happening a string of nights while there's 
no moon uh yeah it's it's been a while so i'm absolutely persevering and gonna make the most of this because i'm gonna be in in my um in, in the uk here we're gonna soon be in um constant twilight with in the not too distant future uh i'm trying to get my words out to you guys as best i can <laughs> Um, so I'm just sucking in as much data as I can. I've got about four and a half hours only tonight of proper darkness. And that's shrinking as the weeks tick on. M101 is gonna touch wood, fingers crossed, look beautiful by the end of it. Um, the other thing I wanted to just follow up on was galaxies as you I'm sure you you you're, you're aware because I'm not I'm about to fall off this chair um, we're well you know well into galaxy season um, and I just wanted to talk it like because I know lots of you out there just got out and bought your rasses <laughs> sorry I shouldn't like the mic um, and galaxies are a little bit small <laughs> but it's fine it's fine don't worry you haven't blown your money <laughs> it, it, when you whatever you've got whatever scope there's such a multitude of options when it comes to galaxies and, and I never realized this until this last sort of year basically you know, I, I used to worry and stress, oh, galaxy season's going to be coming up, I'm going to still get a decent picture, it's going to, you know, it's going to be like, spot the object. <laughs> Whether you've got uh, bullion optics, um, star field, whatever it's called, star something, or other 72, you know, ST80, one of those daft rasa. Rasha thing. No, they're not daft. They're absolutely fantastic. I, I, I'm and I'm just jealous. This is you know they're they're all beautiful objects and this is the time, galaxy season should be called, you know, creative season because, I actually think, you know, a nebula you either frame it or you don't. I know there's big like Cygnus wall and stuff, pick bits of it, but what I mean is with galaxies you can. With a whirlpool, you've got a couple of other little, um, you know, you've got a couple of others in, in the frame. You think, right, well, actually, I'm not going to have the galaxy in the centre of the frame. I want these other little baby ones in there. And just make it, you know, be creative. Galaxy season is creative season. We shall create. I'm creating a, a mess of this, so I'm going to. Uh, I'm just going to oversee this for a bit, have a bit of a nap, I think, because... <sighs> guys, all the best. Love you guys for your thumbs up. Love you guys for your subscribing and supporting this crazy, but the best, UK's number one <laughs> Astro Channel Wayne's Cave for you. This is for you. Um, God love you. Clear skies. Later. Hi there, guys. Welcome back to Wayne's Cave, UK's number one astro YouTube channel. I just thought I'd give it a whirl. Just go through this workflow that uh, is pretty generic for me on this software. So I'll come back to our uh, star map, come into here, I know my target, come, come into find an object here, look, I've got planned, it's MOM101, so I can uh, click on details here, look, centre it in the map here, just here, we have M101, I'll right click on him, go to M101 please, capture and solve, wait solve, M101. There we go. With five arc seconds, so we are absolutely on the bullseye. We usually, while well, that's settling down, I then go into the into my my capture sequence plan. Saved one for us. 
So we'll go into this folder look. And I've cleverly labelled it four hours. Roughly on an LRGB scheduler. And here's the number of exposures for the first run in the second. And I'm doing two minutes for the luminance and uh, seven minutes on uh, RGB. It is game zero, so I can have. Um, I, I sort of need these longer runs, and I've noticed there is reasonable signal at these sorts of levels. But all I've got to do is, is cool down this camera. Another little tip: obviously, people say, "Oh, yeah, I want to, I want to cool down to minus 20." They go to 20, or whatever, and go bang. Uh, which is okay if your software knows what it's doing, but you don't want to be cooling and warming up too quickly. And I don't trust software to not ruin kit and stuff, so, you know, from from 8 degrees, I'd ask it to do um, 2. I sort of did 5 sort of degrees at a time, sort of thing, 5 or 6 degrees at a time at the, at the most, so I would just sort of chillax a bit, still waiting for pure darkness. Anyway, I'll bring him down to minus 15 uh, and hit start. Another little nifty thing is I can program it to park at 3 a.m. look at this time of year 3.50 a.m. and then play. So we've got a countdown uh, and then it will park at this time. And depending on how you've set up the scheduler, it doesn't necessarily mean it will stop taking photos. So you do have to be careful not to over program this, and you don't want to be opening up your shutter for seven minutes in the blazing sun. So, you guys get yourself some good photons sucked up, and I'll catch up with you soon. Radio. See you later. <laughs>